Hello and welcome to module 14, video two. Again, don't forget to get the notes and submit them. All right, so um, we're left off with uh, routing sources. So <clears throat> we have, not the routing sources, yes, uh, the routing table. All right, so these are the codes that you will see in the routing table. Please jot these down. There are directly connected networks, anything that you see, you see. Static routes, you'll see them with the letter S. And dynamic routing protocol, like O or D, O for OSPF, D for um, dual, which is the algorithm that is used by um, EIGRP or R for RIP. Link L is identifies the actual interface of the default gateway. And the start is, is a, uh, a route that is a candidate for a default route. All right, so what I really want to do here, you know what? Let me give you an example. Okay, I have it in the notes right here. And so everything that you see on the screen right here, please write it down, but I want you to listen. You can always pause this and type this later on, but you need to write all of this down. This is an example of two entries in the routing table. If you type show IP route and the routing table displays these two entries, so the letter O indicates that you have learned this network. It's saying that this network was learned with this mask from, the, from a routing protocol called OSPF, okay? And this number 110 means it's the administrative distance. OSPF has an administrative distance of 110. If it was R for RIP, this would have been 120. If it was D for EIGRP, this would have been 90. If it was a directly connected, zero, static, it would have been a one, right? And then this number two says, this network is two hops away. In other words, you have to go through another router to get to the destination, okay? It's not directly connected to the your neighboring router. There's another router behind that. It's two hops away. And this is your direct your directly connected interface, your neighbor's interface. This is where you need to send the packet to. So if there was a match, when you did the ending with the 24 and you got the result was matched with this, you're gonna send it to your directly connected interface that's located on 172.16.100.5, or you're gonna let it go out of your serial, your exit interface, your serial 0001, okay? And this is the time I have learned this entry about 13 seconds, 13 minutes or 45 seconds ago. This is when I learned it, okay? If you see the letter L, it indicates this interface, the interface Fast Ethernet 00 has the IP address 10, 10, 15, 256 with slash 32. What this means is if a packet comes in and it matches exactly this, that means that packet is destined for this interface and he will process it and will not send it anywhere, right? This is for the local. All right, so when you finish writing this up, let's move on. We'll, move, we'll continue. And uh, we don't have to even go through this. This is what I wanted to explain with that example previously. So we went through this already, okay? Uh, Directly connected networks, we've talked about that with the slash, the static routes, with the S's, right? So this is your next hop, right? This is one hop away. Two hops away will be another router. So whatever you have in the routing table right here, it's only one hop away, okay? So when you're typing a, a static route in this case, Okay, anybody in this router, you can say anybody that wants to go to 190. So you, if you want to type a static route, you can say IP route 10040. What this is saying is anybody that wants to go to 10040 with this mask slash 24, you're writing the destination IP address of your neighbor on this router. If anybody wants to go to, that's what IP route means. Anybody wants to go to. 10040 network with this slash, they need to go to this interface, 10032, which is this interface. So if anybody wants to reach this network, 
I'm going to send them to this next hop interface. Now, if you don't want to type this address, the next hop, you can type the name of your exit interface, serial 011. All right, so it's either you type 011 or the 1003. You can't have both. If you're going to type an IP address, it has to be the next hop. If you're going to type the name of the interface, it has to be your exit interface when you're typing the static IP. So IP route is when you write in. This is where you create your own entries in the routing table. You're telling the router, uh, you're putting all the entries yourself. And you'll see the letter S when you put that in the routing table. If it's dynamic, routers pass updates to each other. And according to the update, there's an algorithm, a program that calculates the best routes, and they populate the routing table. All right, so routing protocols are like OSPF, EIGRP, RIP. Okay, um, so, so that's that. Here's what I want you to write down. Routing, dynamic routing protocols, routers communicate with each other to build their own routing table. And we have RIP2 and EIGRP are called distance routing protocols. We'll write that down as well. They build the routing table from the directly connected routers. So they get information from directly connected routers, and that's how they build their tables. They talk to their neighbors, in other words. OSPF, on the other hand, is also a dynamic routing protocol, but it's called a link state protocol. And the difference between the link state and the distance vector like RIP2 and EIGRP is that link state protocols such as OSPF, they learn, it's, they learn about their, their learn and build their routing tables from all the routers in the area, not just the neighbors, everybody in a specific area. All right, so that's that. Here is, okay, we talked, this is for, um, IPv6 destination, you see that? That's 50 hops away, right? And by the way, you always have to write down also the FE because remember the link local address is not routable, so it has, has to be in the routing table when you're doing that. So routing, pro, route, IPv6 protocols use the link, link, link local address of the next hop. OSPF routing protocol for IPv6 is beyond the scope of this course which we're not gonna get into. So we'll talk about that later on. All right, so what is the default route? Default route is, it specifies the next hop router to use when the router table does not contain a specific route that matches the destinations. Okay, so if you get a packet coming in here and I don't see where to send it to, I'm gonna send it out to the ISP, for example, by default. All right, I don't have to worry about that structures. They okay. So here we're talking about parents and child. So uh, in IPv6, there's no parent. I just want to show you some. When you see a routing in here, as you can see, this is the parent, and the subnet in is called child. So what you do is you come in. The routing table is an old way of doing this with IPv4, is you have to match the parent. If the parent does not match, you do not check anything, any of the child's. You jump in from one parent to the other. Is that clear? But if the slash 24 has matched, then you got to go in and try to see a match in the children. These are the child indented. This is how you can tell. Okay? In IPv6, this doesn't exist. IPv6, there's no everybody. You you um, you do everything step by step. All right. If you remember the distance vector, what is the distance vector? Please write this down. The distance vector indicates. I'm sorry, not the distance vector. The administrative distance indicates the trustworthiness of the route. Why is that important? And they are <clears throat> the main. He's the, you also need to write. Um, OSPF has an administrative distance of 90. EIGRP, um, EIGRP has 90. OSPF 110. RIP2 has 120. 
static route is one and directly connected is zero. Now let's just talk about the dynamic routing protocol, EIGRP and OSP, OSPF and RIP2. What happens if you run all three routing protocols and they all go out and figure out the best routes to the destination because all three protocols are running on your router and they found different routes to get to your destination. Your router is going to pick EIGRP routes over OSPF and RIP2. Why? Because it has a lower administrative distance. Because the routers are told to trust EIGP routes more than RIP2 or OSPF. Why? Well, there are, we'll talk about that in class, but here's one reason is because EIGRP is a little more, sophistic, more sophisticated algorithm. It looks for the best, uh, the fastest links with the minimum delays. And they have other metrics that they can use to calculate the best route to the destination. OSPF only looks for the fastest links, the bandwidth. They don't care about delay. And RIP2, even worse, they only look for shortest distance. They don't even look at link speed. All right, so that's that. And here they are, right? So this is probably a good list to see, uh, to use. So please snippet this, screenshot it, and include it in your notes. All right, so we talked about the difference between, st remember, static is the one that you type into the route. Dynamic is the one that you, where the routers talk to each other. All right, I think we've covered that already. And, and here are the main difference between dynamic and static routing. Again, please copy this, snip it, and put it in your notes. Otherwise, build your own table if you wanna, if you wanna type that in, all right? So when it comes to static routing, why would you want to type static routing? There are really three reasons. Number one, if you have a router that's directly connected to your ISP and there's no other way to go out. So type that in. Don't have the router, don't run a static, don't run um, a routing protocol that's going to use up a lot of CPU power. And if your router has, you know, older routers have CPU, you know, the CPU and memory is not that great enough. That's probably when you are um, going to do a static route. When you type a static route, you know exactly which path your data is going to take, right? Um, so it's not going to. If but the problem is with static routing, if you if there is a link that goes down, you have to get involved and recalculate and retype in the um, the route in the routing table. Uh, you know, if you have more than two hops, it becomes cumbersome. And if you have a lot of routers interconnected in a mesh, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to type in the routes to every single route in the network and finding the best route. So when there's a complex of connections, a mesh connections of routers, it's preferable that you use routing protocols such as OSPF, EIGRP, and RIP2. All right. Most routers will run dynamic routing because that's less work for you and they optimize and finding the best path to the destination but if you have one or two routers you could do static routing and that speeds things up a little bit and more secured of course all right so that's it for if i'm not mistaken for the um static i'm sorry for the routing concepts uh this is the evolution of ipv uh routing protocols so um, IPv, uh, OSPF version three is the one that supports version six. RIP, routing information protocol, next generation is the one that supports IPv6 as well. RIP2, OV2 with OSPF, and EI, the enhanced interior gateway routing protocols are the ones that supports VLSM. All right, and... Um, I guess this is the interior gateway routing protocol within, let's say, you know, for private inside few routers. If you go from one area to another area, then you gotta go ISPs use the border gateway protocols to do that. All right, so um, I'm gonna stop right here and then we'll continue with this um, on the next chapter. So please write up whatever I ask you to, and I'll see you on the next chapter.